Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. Today is part two of my Entryshare Techno 3 template explanation. This template I've been made during my live stream session on my other Audio React YouTube channel. And yeah, last week we talked about the sound design and the composition, the MIDI of each track. And today we're gonna talk a little bit more about the arrangement, automation, the variation, and a bit of mixing and mastering. If you wanna watch part one, I put it in the description. But yeah, let's have a listen to the track and let's jump into it. So it's basically a track with different parts. You have other parts as well with stuff more like uh, this. But you have as well kind of weird break. And then you would get more and more adventurous and you would make further and further out gambles as to what you would dream. And uh, that, that keeps things moving. That's the nature of life. Alright, so that's give you a global idea of the track. And as you probably guessed, there is quite different parts. So what was the global idea for the arrangement? How, what was in my mind? And basically uh, this track has been inspired a lot by KRTM music and especially his last album called It Will Make the World a Better Place. And there is a lot of tracks which are pretty short, not especially long. It's not like the classic track with the, um, with the intro, outro for DJ. And it's usually start with an intro and it's finishing with the outro. And sometimes in the same track, you have like kind of the impression that it's kind of two track in one track and that's what i try to recreate it so you can see as a global view of the arrangement you can see that you have an intro then after you have a chorus then you have a verse then you have a second chorus then you have a break and then you have a second verse and you have new element coming and then you have a third chorus and then you have a kind of bridge and the outro but even without for example the first chorus you can see there is quite some variation and changement all the time even without the first verse you see uh, i try to create this kind of track with a lot of changements so when i say a lot it's not like a every two bar but like trying to bring a lot of variation having fast changement brutal changement so you are listening one thing and then you have a small break or a kind of sfx which kind of make it then switch to another type of sound and yeah the best is to go through the track and i will explain you everything the, so the track starts with an intro i didn't want the classic dj stuff i wanted to do something a little bit different and it starts with the main lead uh, which sound like this so this track has been kind of and this lead i've been inspired by the track super soldier and it's kind of starts similar and i've add on top of that some ambience obviously to make it too weird Right, yeah, so for the intro you have as well, so you have this main lead that I've just said, and then after I add another one to kind of question answer uh, the lead to add, because I felt that the lead one just by itself was a little bit, it was missing something, so I decided to add this second lead which sound like this, which answer the first lead which sound like this. And so what's happening is playing there and then after here it's playing again the lead but here you can see this scent is not playing there and instead what I'm doing is I'm missing a blank like everything is fading down and then after I start straight away with the chorus I start the track like straight away full blast on this is something like very common with his kind of track it's like it's always kind of very high in energy like there is no really like moment where it's like kind of chill or like where you just have the kick and you don't have drums it's always like high in energy it's like always a driving beat so Straight away you start the track, I add full on hats. So you have this one, this one, 
this one and the perk and all together with the low end it creates straight away something super energetic and so yeah i drop with this answer from the scent from the lead one so you can see like it's supposed to be here but obviously because it was the intro and I shift it here and then I start the track straight away like this and you will have the lead one as well which is answering uh, back as well here a bit of variation here as well which is playing three times Right, and here I wanted to add variation. Like I said, on this track, I want a lot of changement happening often. I didn't want it to have the kind of track where it's the same look for 16 bar or 32 bar, really changing like every 8 bit maximum, changing something. So, yeah, here I have some changement pattern with the kick, which kind of follow a little bit as well uh, the, the pattern of, of this one. So, here is my kick with the modify pattern, and here is the lead, and you can see that this one. Sub doesn't supposed to be playing here, but I put it because it's in the same time done with the lead, so it's kind of crazy. Nice effect. And so then here what's happening, we have some changement, even though you can still see the question answer of the lead, you can see that I'm adding this percussion here. And this percussion here. And you can see that I'm deleting some hats and you're gonna see what I, how I play with the drum. So sometimes when there is this lead playing, you can hear, see here the hats metal is not playing. But when the percussion is playing, the hats metal is playing. And then again, here when the lead is playing, the hats metal is not playing. And then after it's playing again when I play this one. So you have, you're gonna hear you have this nice variation happening. No drums. Again, the pitch repeat on the kick. All right, and so the pattern repeat, and then here you should expect here to be longer and to continue, but obviously I wanted some changement in my arrangement and go into something different. So what I've done is instead of letting this one going like this, I cut it and I've introduced this scent, which is kind of coming completely out of the blue and that's exactly the purpose. And it's like to kind of surprise the listener and then we're gonna enter something that is completely different than what we just listened. So it sounds now like this. So note that to help the transition, I have on the mix down here, I have an EQ uh, where I have some low cut. So this, I will always use that to kind of create some small break or just like before to introduce something you see like I've done here as well. Uh, it's always helping. Yeah, next we move into the verse one. So always important changing the scent. So here I have this scent, which you never heard before, which is straight away introduced right at the drop. You can see I changed the drum pattern. So now we there is this hat playing which was not playing before, this perk playing as well, which was not playing before, and all of the drums who were playing before, I kind of get rid of them. And that is something that I had in mind before to create the track and before to even have the arrangement, is to have a lot of material and a lot of content in terms of hats and texture and groovy texture, because I knew that I will have to always have this energetic and driving rhythm, but I cannot use always the same hat, because obviously after it gets boring and it's always the same linear things. So I will have different type of driving hats and texture, this way I can alternate with some and so this way was this one playing first and then now we go into this one so maybe if I just solo just the pack and the hats you will understand what I mean so on this part I have this and then you go into 
So still something very driving, very energetic, but a different character, but still that fit the track. And yeah, so let's jump into it. Then you have this scent, which is coming. <laughs> which is a new weird scent in addition uh, to kind of get rid a little bit of the the lead one like we heard it already a little bit too much i don't want you to hear it too much because otherwise you're gonna get bored so with a bit of this we replace it by that and we keep our lead two sound but then we extend the pattern to for something longer and yeah so that's how it sounds here i've done something interesting instead of straight away what i would have usually do is if i want to introduce a new hat like i've done here i will probably straight away put it straight here uh so it will be like But here I wanted to do something a bit different and I say, okay, you know what, let's actually do like two first bar without any drum and then I bring them back uh, when I bring this other scent. So this way, this scent is like kind of playing without any drum in the same time, it adds variation. Again, I've made this kind of beat kick repeat uh, here at the end of the of the bar and yeah, that's how. Right. So again, you can see all the time it's like you have changement every eight bar and every 16 bar you have a kind of a motif changement so you don't have anymore the same main lead you kind of have all the time a new lead let's say and so here i bring back the same than uh, the first chorus so what's gonna happen is now you have gonna have this weird scent one playing as well you're gonna have different drum here what's gonna happen is you're gonna see they now enter answer each other so the lead one which sound like this Then after you have this scent. And then after you have the scent one playing. And then after you have lead two playing again. And then lead one. So you can see they play one after each other. Uh, and I have some changement with the drum as well. You can see I start just with the hat metal and hat grid. And then after I add the hat noise and the right. And to make the transition between the chorus and the verse one. What I've done is here you can see I could have just done a low cut. And have still my drum playing and the kick. But the thing is the impact will have been not the same. And because I was reintroducing the lead one. I know that this lead is strong enough to just be playing by itself so i get rid of everything literally everything except the ambience and to help the transition i've made this beat repeat on the kick but because the lead is so powerful it just you doesn't really need transition and then so this way when i'm gonna drop it's gonna be more impactful <laughs> So you see what I've done here, I've basically Like I said, this lead is so strong that you can If you make it play by itself, you can add some variation And even if it's a strong with variation Because getting rid of the two hats, it would usually sound a little bit weird and unnatural But because of the nature of this lead, it works to kind of get rid of I've made a little bit of changement in the kick pattern as well which is kind of following the main lead here again. You see, I tried to make the kick playing in the same time than the note of the lead. Just create a different um, pattern. And again, the great thing about cutting the hats for these two bar is that then when I bring back the hats, I bring back even more hats and it's way much more powerful again to do that than if I was just doing uh, like this and having like just two extra. So this, you cannot always all the time do it, but when you can, it works well. And then, so it's got this very high driving uh, moment. So then again, 
again you still have your lead one playing then lead two then sent one then lead two then lead one but here you're gonna see before to, uh, coming into the break obviously i have full hearts i needed to kind of have a kind of a bridge to kind of help to enter into the break so that's what i've done you can see when the lead is playing again i get rid of all of the drum i play this with pattern with the kick and you're gonna see it's gonna help everything out a full drum look at Let's suppose that you were able. All right, and here we have a brutal kind of transition, a little bit out of nowhere, but that was totally the point. I've kind of used some, so I use this noise SFX that I've used before, I forgot to tell, but, but it's kind of a wide noise playing right before uh, the drop, and it's just helped with the transition. But there is some FX as well, some uh, here, which is the auto pan. It's kind of a gating effect. But except that it's gonna do it on the whole track. All right, and then I get rid of everything. I have this big low and so basically the kick is playing, but I have this automation on this reverb, which is giving a big boomy effect. If I remove it, you're gonna hear the kick is playing normal, but if I put it back, got this kind of big low and cinematic kind of effect and then we have the break where you have uh, a pad a vocal and this kind of weird tv noise so the idea of the break it was really to create contrast into the track so having completely something different like first was more something like the first part and and the and the second part is it's like the theme of the track is kind of weird a bit uncomfortable and a bit scary and then you have this break where it's like all nice and and a bit ethereal and and that's great a great contrast and you have this vocal as well and so you have the pad playing and you have a vocal the dream. and you have as well some noise i wanted to add because the, all of the track is pretty noisy and pretty textural and noisy and it's pretty rich in terms of noisy texture so i wanted that as well uh, for the break so i had this and again i didn't add one of the one on the track before just to add variation and have something different and then you're gonna see there is a lot of effects on the mic down there is this riser rack i will put the link in the description if you want to find out more it's kind of a delay reverb and uh kind of a washout effect which like kind of bring a lot of delay and reverb and create this tension and you got you got some redux that you're gonna hear for sure and yeah it sounds like this the break let's suppose that you were able every night to dream any dream you wanted to dream Let's have a dream which isn't under control. Where something is going to happen to me that I don't know what it's going to be. And then you would get more and more adventurous. And you would make further and further out gambles as to what you would dream. And uh, that, that keeps things moving. That's the nature of life. So yeah, this riser effect. You can hear how it's going a lot into a reverb delay. There is a high pass filter as well. And you have this digital distortion, which is like the reduce, the bit reduction effect. And yeah, that's what is happening during uh, the break. And then after again, it stop. You have this short silence before to drop with again, the noise. And then we go into the verse two. So here again, I wanted something different. I didn't want it to go back to something I already done uh, before. So I introduced this up. <laughs> kind of weird hypnotic up and again as the track need to be always high in energy like constantly having a high energy i cannot like drop without hearts or without percussion it's always need to be highly driving so i have the noise grid playing as well i have some other percussion and some driving hat so this way when it's dropping it's straight away bang in your head so that's the nature of life.
right, so what's happened is the 8 bar is like this, then I introduce back this scent again and it helped me during the short break I have here, the shortcut, and then I introduced the more driving hats which add an extra energy and then we're gonna go into the chorus 3 so you can see again a very fast changement but that's the that's the whole purpose of the track so I have this locket get rid of the percussion and when I drop you're gonna see I'm gonna drop with this main lead so you remember this main lead is just just by himself but remember that with this lead just by itself it works so I've get rid of the drum for this one so this way I can reintroduce them later and add this extra energy so I have a look at with the noise as well for helping the transition and here it's gonna be back with like uh, the chorus the previous chorus where the lead one and the lead two answer each other one after the other and I will progressively add as well some other drum afterwards so yeah that's how it goes <laughs> So you can see that here the arrangement is a bit more linear than before you see there is a bit less changement often happening that's something I wanted as well because I didn't want it to be like always changing 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 all the time during the whole track I wanted a moment where you can uh, I was thinking like when you're on the dance floor or you can still have this long moment where it's just banging for let's say a minute and you are not interrupted by a break or something like that so that's why i leave it a little bit longer you can see what i've done here i reintroduced the drum you would have no, i would have normally do it like in the same time than introducing a new element but you see here i've done it in between which is kind of giving a nice effect and then after i reintroduce the right and then we go back into what is kind of the final break and you will have So this I call it bridge because it's still quite high in energy, it's not really the outro yet and you can see I start to get rid of still a little bit of the elements or of the lead 2 but I add this perk 4 which is a bit more rhythmical. So this part is a bit more like a rhythmical part of the track and yeah slowly still I get rid of the element until the outro. Look at Keep the R playing, and then after it, and then after is the outro where it's just the R playing where I use the reduce as well, like to kind of make uh, a kind of effect outro effect. I have the this washout effect as well which come in so yeah that's pretty much with the global arrangement so now let's talk about automation variation so here the variation is main are mainly and automate there is not that much uh, automation there is just once the delay here that i use at the intro just to add a little bit of longer tail on the second one but that's it but that's pretty much it yeah i play with the the cutoff as well during the intro but then everything is it's playing uh, straight for that because for example like element like up I didn't automate maybe just the filter to kind of reduce at this part because obviously it was kind of more purpose for more for mixing purpose because this part you have the lead so it gets a bit more busier you mix so you want to put your up a little bit more in the background but I didn't really need to make uh, automation because I use LFO to slightly modulate the sound you can see you have a flanger as well which is gonna slightly modulate so it's evolving by itself I don't need to do it and yeah that's pretty much it for the uh, automation I've done a lot more on the master effects so you have like I said you have the low cuts who are like helping for the short break uh, that's something I do all the time you have the redux for the break and for the outro then you have this washout effect as well I, I use as the intro and on the break and for the outro uh, that's the weird deal actually I use as well during the break which is kind of give a weird feeling to the break
this is normal which like this without the effect is kind of sounding like clear and normal and and uh, yeah clean clear and normal and then it's got this weird fading effect obviously because it's a weird delay effect and that's the auto pan when i uh, introduced for the break where this kind of scatter effect yeah then after it was more about the variation in the arrangement which I already talked about when I was talking step by step. You see where like the beat repeat with the kick. Because if you look at closely at the arrangement, you can see that there is very often changement happening. So because of that, I didn't really have to do that much of automation and modulations. So yeah, if you check at least every eight bar, there is some changement, something different happening. Either I add drums, either I add a, add a new scent, remove one, got a small break, then change the type of drum. So like I explained, you know, sometimes I have more noisy drums, sometimes have more gritty drums sometimes now i put them both together and then i will do a small break for like two bars and then reintroduce everything together like i just explained and that's how i have add automation and variation to the track now let's talk about the mixing you probably saw it last week if you watched last week video but there is not that much mixing i usually don't do much mixing like for example for the kick uh, everything is more like for i would say like sound design is there is nothing like really like the overdrive is what gives the character to the kick there is this kick punch that i use to help the kick cut through the mix i talked about it last week and and then i will usually add reverb to add a bit of to make it less dry put it into a space and then drum bus i explain it as well that i used a lot for this track as to kind of put the sound more like in your face uh, that's really great for that because you have the compressor who work really well you can add some extra drive and crunch to add some bit more color and one thing i like to do is i will have a reverb and i will put it the drum bus after the reverb the thing is here i haven't applied the compressor but if i apply the compressor you will have a very long tail with the reverb and i will use the transient negatively to kind of reduce the tail of the reverb this way even if i have a big reverb my sound will be like it's like in the big space but by using the transient parameter of the drum bus which act kind of like a gate i will shut down this tail and i will have a sharp sound but still like feel like it's in the loud room and yeah then here i just have like the eq is because was kind of i wanted something more subby and bassy so obviously i don't need the high frequency so i have a heavy low pass and i cut everything under 35 hertz and then there's just some classic sidechain compression and nothing crazy so for the hats, I send them into a reverb, which is a return here, which contain a reverb. I think I changed the reverb from the original rack because this is like the live 11. Then here again, what I've done is the trick with the drum bus where you can see I use the transient. You see how it's more precise uh, with transient negatively. And yeah, that's what I've done. Some EQ just to remove usually. I would not always do it, but for this one, because there is a lot of hats and percussive elements and elements in general, you have like 24 tracks. I just like apply a high pass filter just to get rid of all the unnecessary to avoid everything to conflict later on. This is sound design, all of the distortion. This is sound design purpose. It's no... Uh, mixing yeah no there is nothing crazy what's what's important obviously it's how you're gonna uh, level um, each element and that, that's something which unfortunately cannot really be uh, teach as it's different for each track but what i usually what i'm doing is i always when i'm making music i always try to kind of mix as i produce so what i mean by that is every time i add a new element i will make sure that it's already fit the mix perfectly so there is two important things to check for that first picking up the right sound that work well with the rest of the track and second make sure it doesn't over clash with other element and that it's at the right level like level it's really something like that can make or break a mix but unfortunately there is no tips i can give you because there is no really tips it's something that you will learn with experience i guess but yeah that's the, the main things you can see even there is a lot of device all of this is like sound design related it's like effect that i use to give a color to the sound like to for the character of the sound no like to make it fit with the rest of the track you can see like all the eq is just high pass you have some sidechain compression that's mainly what you will get sidechain compression eq eq the drum bus like i explained it's like to put 
the sound in your face and I've done that with all of them. This is the sound design, session compression, sound design, sound design, sound design, sound design. There is nothing crazy about the way if I have to mix, I will usually use two devices, which are the EQ to kind of make be make it fit a little bit better the mix. Or if I feel like this element is taking too much space in the mix, so I will reduce some frequency and saturation just to make it a little bit more louder, add a bit more harmonics. But then all of the time that we'll use, I will use delay and reverb. It's not as a mixing purpose. It's more like how I have a, an idea of how the sounds should sound. Like for example, I feel like it needs to be in the warehouse. So I will have a kind of wide reverb. If I want something my, more my hat in the small room, I will have a shorter reverb. But this is sound design decision. It's not really mixing related. And tips I can give you, it's for example, with the reverb, trying to don't have a too long decay, don't have to much dry wet as well EQing your reverb can be great especially the high end here you have to see it's case by case it's not a rule of thumb but sometimes that will have a lot of noise and remove a bit of clarity so if you have apply a higher shave it will make your reverb a little bit clearer and your sound will be a bit less messy. But yeah, usually, to be honest, when I finish the template, I always try to see like, okay, where well, is there a problem? Yeah, about missing one tip I can give you. Once you finish track, what I used to do, which was a mistake, is I will always go like track after track. I will start with the kick. Okay, how I can mix the kick? And then I will go after to the bass. How I can, I will add maybe an EQ, a compressor, and then I will go to the hats. I will try to EQ, I will try to compress. And I will do that for every single track without really thinking about is there a problem actually like does it does it need to be fixed or is it good as it is and this is something i a mistake i used to make and now now that i'm being very careful with what sound i pick up making sure i pick up elements that fit well together that doesn't over clash to each other doesn't use the same frequency once i finish the track i don't have that much mixing to be done and usually when there is a problem i know and i go to this element so for example for the hats i know that it was kind of messy everything so i apply a high pass filter to all of my hats almost and just to make sure that i really space here after for the leads and then after a bit more down for the obviously the kicks but then that's it i haven't make like surgical eq whatsoever never you see it's just like a bit of cut and a bit of boost something i've noticed as well on my way of eqing the more i'm careful about the sound i pick up and making sure they all fit together the less my eq are surgical like the more it's like like a very wide bound and it's just like very high shelf boost or very like cut but yeah that's pretty much it in terms of mixing now let's talk about mastering so this is what i call a uh, homemade mastering this is not like a, a proper mastering i don't have the room for that i don't have the skill for that i'm not a professional master i will recommend to don't really focus too much on the mastering to don't rely too much i think it's good to know a little bit of knowledge because if you finish a track and you want to maybe try it on the club it's good to have a bit of knowledge of how to make it a little bit more louder maybe and like to have a, a more cohesive mix let's say but then i will always recommend if you want to a proper master to give just your track to someone professional that do that on the daily basis i will show you what i've done and what i usually do for my template to be honest my personal track i don't master them anymore i don't even remember when is the last time i use ozone because I just do the pre-master, the pre-master sounds good enough to me and then I just send to the master to the label and usually the label when they sign it they do the master or they pay someone to make it but I don't make it. So first thing is utility, put the bass in mono, I put a bit of the width a little bit more to enhance a little bit the stereo. So let's pick up a very busy part of the track for example here. This is obviously very subtle. So this is a bit of rebalance, boosting a bit the bass and boosting a little bit the high. Usually uh, I, I put a locate at 30 Hertz and I boost a little bit because otherwise you lose a little bit too much of your uh, low frequency. Let me remove actually everything. So like this you get rid of the very low low energy that is useless remove around 200 hertz i just feel like it's become a little bit less muddy all right then i will often i boost around three kilohertz i don't know i just feel like it's add a bit more clarity Always being gentle, a few dB just. It's 
so then a higher shaft to kind of boost the very high frequency, making the mix a bit more airy. But then I will use a high cut to obviously cut everything at 16 kilohertz. Just rebalancing slightly you mix, just making it a little bit more tight uh, before to go into the compressor. So here usually how I will set, I will set the attack around 30 milliseconds. Depends, depends on the track actually, but no less than 3 milliseconds. And really either I will leave halfway I'll go for something a bit tighter. I will always leave the ratio at four. And then what I will do is I bring down the makeup and I bring down I always try to don't have something too savage in terms of pumping, you see. One thing as well to avoid, you kick to trigger uh, your sidechain, you apply the EQ at around 300 Hz, so this way it's not your low end which is triggering your good compressor, because usually the highest air energy is the, in the low end, so then it's your low end triggering your compressor and you don't want that, you want to have overall process. So I go down until I have a nice reduction, not something too strong, I don't want to be too crazy. And then I will bring in the makeup. This you can go a bit more savage. I stay there, but I could have gone more, but I like to don't overdo it neither. Saturator is just to slightly add some harmonic, it's just like one dB drive. You can see you can you have a loss in gain because I bring the output at minus three dB. Just add a little bit of harmonics and then I like to use the color limiter because you have a nice saturation and it just adds a bit of warmth to your sound. Uh, So again, you can abuse of it or you can be a bit more gentle, it depends what you want. And the finally a limiter. It's not even working. It depends if you want to make things louder and squash a little bit more. I haven't done it too much for this track, but you can do that even with can go a little bit more. If you want to go a little bit more savage, you can. Uh, I haven't been that far in my time in the templating, but you can if you want. And yeah, all right, that's it. I think for the template. I hope you like it. I hope you learn a few tricks. If you like the template, you can grab it. The link in the description. It's a great way to support me. And thank you very much for watching, guy. And see you soon. Bye bye.